Hey what's up, I'm Adam if you're new here and I'm a site reliability engineer based in London. Let's talk about the tools that SREs use on a day to day basis and how you can get started playing and learning these tools right now using the free options or the free tiers of these tools. For each one we'll cover at a high level what it is, why SREs use it and how you can start building projects or start playing with it today to get that hands on experience. So let's just get into it. So the first tool or resource on this list is actually Git and GitHub. So Git is a version control system. It allows multiple people, multiple engineers to work on the same code base. It allows us to track any changes to application code or even infrastructure as code. So we can ensure that we know what's going on in our environment. We can enforce best practices and we can collaborate effectively. As SREs, we make changes to application code sometimes and infrastructure as code, as well as write out our own scripts to automate certain tasks. And we need to be comfortable then with using version control systems like Git, but also where we store these things, which is GitHub. Hub. Now you can set up a free GitHub account today and you can install Git locally so that you can use it and get started with your projects. This will allow you to get comfortable with using a version control system and a repository hosting platform like GitHub. And lots of organizations use GitHub or the enterprise versions as part of their organization. So how are you going to get started? You're going to head over to GitHub, you're going to create a free account, and you're going to create the repository and get started with building out your applications or the scripts that you're writing and housing them in GitHub. So the next tool on this list is Visual Studio Code. This is an IDE or an integrated development environment. It allows anybody who is working with code, updating code, writing scripts to have a all encompassed kind of environment that optimizes your task and your processes. So it typically includes an area where you can see all the folders and the files associated with the current project that you're on or the current repository that you have cloned locally. It also has an area for you to edit code to make the changes that you want and then save them to those files. These IDEs also have debuggers so that if there are issues with your code, you can actually debug them more simply and effectively. And there's lots of plugins that you can add. So if you're working, say, with Python or you're working with Terraform, for example, you can add these plugins that will allow you to go through your process and write this code more effectively. It will highlight areas that it sees a problem with, or you can hover over it to get more information about that resource if you're using something like Terraform. So I'll give you an example task as an SRE that may involve you using Visual Studio Code. You have been tasked with improving the logging capabilities of your system, right? The log outputs are just not effective. Maybe they're too noisy, or maybe they're not actually signaling what the issue is with your application when things go wrong. So maybe it's time for you to go back into the application code and tinker around a bit with the logging and the logging functionality. Why not do that in something like Visual Studio Code where you have all of these extra things that you can make use of and it's just a nicer experience. So all you need to do is head over to Visual Studio Code. And again, this is something that you can download for free and get set up pretty simply. Then you can integrate it with things like your GitHub account, right? So that your credentials are set up so that you can work more seamlessly with the other tools and resources that form part of the SRE ecosystem. The so the next tool that I wanna get into what's really more about platforms is actually the cloud and cloud providers like AWS and GCP. Now, if you're going to be an SRE in a cloud native environment, it's important that you understand the services that exist within that cloud provider's offerings and also how to interact with them, which is why it can be amazing to get started with the free tier of these versions. For example, AWS has a free tier and allows you to create an account and get started playing with some of these resources like EC2 or like Lambda. The reason why we as cloud native SREs make daily use of these cloud platforms is because that is where our services, that is where our application is hosted. We need to understand how to navigate these services to optimize for things like reliability, for security, for performance, right? We need to understand how we can make changes effectively and deploy these changes in a safe way. So to get started with the AWS free tier account, you need to navigate to this link here, and then you're just going to set up an account. There is also documentation about the free tier so that you know what is free, what's included, and what's not. So be sure to check that out. But yes, as part of your projects, and if you are using things like servers and databases, or you're going to build a serverless architecture, Getting used to this now and getting hands on with it using the free tier can be an amazing way to get started in your SRE journey. The next set of tools I'm going to talk about are part of the Atlassian suite and they're specifically Jira and Confluence. So Jira is a project management tool that a lot of companies use. They use it to track the work that people are doing, tickets and projects at a higher level. It can be very, very useful if you start to build out your own projects. If you're building a portfolio, you're working on deploying an application, you track your project in Jira. You'll start to get used to creating tickets and writing descriptions for tickets that meet a certain criteria that is expected when you're working in corporate and with other people. 
You can also start to document the work that you're doing in Confluence as well, right? You can start to link tickets and work and documentation all together in this one ecosystem using the Atlassian suite. As SREs, if we are working in an organization that is using Jira and Confluence, then as part of our own tracking our tickets and the work that we're doing, whether it be proactive or reactive, we need to get comfortable with creating, managing and understanding tickets and also documenting our work in Confluence for traceability purposes and so that other people can make use of the things that we are creating or understand any changes that we're making in the environment. So head over to Atlassian to get started with Jira. Again, you'll need to create an account, but other than using Jira, you'll be able to select another offering. So in this case, it will be Confluence and then you can start using that to build out your projects and track your projects. The next tool that we're going to talk about is actually draw.io. Now this is a web-based application that allows you to build out architecture diagrams with ease. It has a number of built-in components that you can use. For example, if you was doing a architecture diagram for an AWS solution you was coming out with, you could use the components that are already existing there. Effectively, each service may have a diagram. So if you're using Lambda and you wanna do arrows to so point to something else like an SNS or something like that, then you can easily use these features to build out a very effective diagram for others to use or for you to use as part of your process. As SREs, we may be building out custom solutions to things or actually redesigning things. And therefore we need support in documentation and diagrams so that other people can understand what's going on and make use of our solutions. To get started with draw.io, you literally just need to navigate to the website. You can decide where you want the architecture diagrams or the diagrams in general to be stored. If you want it to be stored locally, or if you want it in something like Dropbox, I think, or a drive, you saw up to you effectively where you store these. So when you're building out your projects and working on things, think about how you can take the context or the information about that project and put it in a diagram or a series of diagrams to help supplement that information. The next tool we're going to talk about is actually a programming language and it's Python. And I know you're thinking, how long has it taken you this long to even start talking about Python? But here we are. Python is a very powerful programming language that isn't used in applications. It's actually a big part of machine learning and AI and the process of training models, but also it's used for scripts, right? The language lends itself well to scripting and automating tasks, which is what we as SREs often use it for. Python is known for its simplicity, readability, and flexibility. So how are you going to get started? You're going to navigate to this link here and you're going to download Python depending on your system requirements and needs. After that, if you're working on certain projects around scripting or even interacting with AWS resources and you wanna try a hand at something like Boto3, which is a library that you can use with Python, see the outputs and see the, the interactions that happen. The next tool is Terraform. Now Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool. That is, in the same way we write code for our applications, we can actually declare our infrastructure like servers and databases as code as well and make use of all of the advantages that come when our things are deployed and declared as code. So now taking it back to why SREs use Terraform, well, if our infrastructure in our environment is deployed using infrastructure's code like Terraform, we need to understand what is going on, what is being declared in these files and how they're organized and structured. We might need to make a change actually, like the servers need to be changed, the size or the class type, the instance type of these resources need to be altered. And in which case we need to be able to go in and make those changes effectively and then know the processes that follow after. Terraform plans, Terraform applies or understanding the outputs from these executions. This is another one where it's simple to navigate and download Terraform locally and get started with it in your projects. If you are doing things like building out applications that you want to run on AWS or any other cloud server, or maybe even you don't have the application code yet, but you want to see how it would be to build out a three tier architecture in say AWS. And so you're going to deploy some instances in EC2 and a database, and maybe you're going to use something like S3, or maybe you're going to use root 53 you can start to use Terraform and Terraform's files to achieve this. So the next tool or set of tools actually falls under CI-CD. Now CI-CD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. And it's all about how we can create pipelines so that we can make changes to our code potentially locally, push these changes so that we can test and see the impacts of these changes and then deploy them safely and effectively and efficiently into production environments if necessary and having safeguards within that process. Now there are a number of CI CD tools that you can get started with. Some of the ones that are open source include Jenkins so you can get started straight away with that for free. But if you're already using something like GitHub then you can use GitHub Actions to achieve the same thing, right? So build out pipelines to help with your continuous integration and deployment process. Linking this back to SRE, 
again, if we're making those changes, like the ones that we said about infrastructure as code, how are we going to get that pushed out? How are we going to test the changes that we're making, ensure that it flows through the different environments that we have? Perhaps it goes through dev first, then QA, maybe then pre-prod and then prod. How can we make sure that it's behaving as expected in each of these environments before it even gets to the end user, right? How do we even know how to build out pipelines and understand what's going on in our pipelines to troubleshoot issues if it gets blocked at a certain point? This is why it's important for SREs to understand CI CD, even if we're not necessarily building out these pipelines from scratch in the same way that a DevOps engineer may be required to do. So depending on the route you take, whether it's something like Jenkins or GitHub Actions, there's a lot of documentation around how to get started with these particular CI CD tools. And then about bringing it into your project, well, if you are deploying something into your cloud environment, for example, or making changes to your application code, think about how you can build out pipelines around that, right? So that you're not just manually changing things, right? Or manually uploading changes to say your AWS environment. How can you build out a pipeline to automate this process, right? And have automated tests involved or automated deployments and deployment types. So the final set of tools that I wanna talk about fall under observability. Now this is a very big part of being an SRE, being able to see into your system so that you can understand what's going wrong if there's an incident, but also how to optimize, how to make the system better and also to avoid future incidents before they even occur. So we can kind of think about this in two ways. So the cloud providers that we use often have a native observability tool, something like CloudWatch, if you're using AWS. But there are also a number of other tools. Some of them are paid and some of them are open source that you can get started with. So let's talk about Prometheus and Grafana. Now, this combination of tools is very popular, especially in organizations where cost may be a limiting factor, right? Or revenue may be a limiting factor, and they want to go down an open source route versus, say, using something like Datadog, which is another observability tool that has a lot of capabilities but isn't the most inexpensive option on the market. Prometheus is an open source monitoring and alerting tool that allows you to collect information on your environment and set up alerts and monitoring around that. But Grafana is actually a visualization tool. So how you can actually visualize that data in the form of things like dashboards so you can see at a high level what's going on in your environment. I think it's pretty self-explanatory as a site reliability engineer why these tools are so important to us. In terms of getting started, if you want to go down the cloud native solution, if you've already created that AWS free tier account, take a look at cloud watch right for example take a look at metrics and dashboards and log insights and understand how these services can be used to improve our observability capabilities and if you're working on your own projects think about how you can take a look at these resources and monitor what's happening say you've deployed an ec2 instance that's running an application how can you effectively monitor that particular resource using something like cloudwatch I'll be honest, I've spent most of my career using enterprise tools like AppDynamics and New Relic and playing around a little bit with Datadog. But if you want to get started with Prometheus and Grafana, I will leave a number of resources also in the description and tutorials for you to start playing around with that and integrating that into your own projects. So I know we've covered quite a bit. I do have a free resource link that I have created and left in the description for you to get started. It has a summary kind of each of these tools, but also the links to directly access these resources. So you can get started with that. I'll leave all of the rest of the things that I've spoken about, including my becoming an SRE course in the description as well. I'll see you in the next video.